to talk about. I thought this might be a fun idea for a video series, I guess you could say. Um, just some interesting games that I have that I pulled from my game collection over there uh, that I'm going to show you guys. So, we're going to go in order from pretty much uh, age, it seems. So, okay, first game I got here is an NES game. This game is called The Guardian Legend. So, um, so this game is a hybrid over the, what do you call it, um, like kind of overhead Zelda style, um, adventure game and a shmup, a shoot em up game. It's very cool. It's got really good graphics and, um, for an NES game, it just, is suited, just very responsive and nice. Um, I had wanted this game for a long time, I remember, but I could never find a good price for it and I think at one point, um, I did find it for a pretty good price, uh, which was which was great. And um, I love these NES games, the texture on them. Um, but yeah, a uh, very interesting, unique NES game that I feel like people don't really talk about a lot. Um, I think it got weirdly localized over here, but also really cool. It has a female protagonist, which was um, decently rare, especially for NES games at the time. Um, and it's just a kind of a weird hidden gem. I'm sure if um, I'm sure if you're interested in um, in NES collecting, you know about it. But um, but I'm glad I have it. It's it's very very cool. Um, to run with that right there. Okay, so the next game I got is a PS1 game. I tried to get a varying uh, consoles and generations. This is a PS1 game. There's a little bit of sticker residue, but this is Croc 2. Um, a sequel to Croc 1. This is actually a 3D platformer, um, and it's extremely fun, in my opinion. It's very nostalgic. I have a lot of good memories of playing this game on PC, of all places. Um, but Croc was actually pretty much the prede predecessor to Mario 64, but was, um, was, like, denied by Nintendo, so, um, it kind of got pushed to, pushed to after Mario 64 came out. So that one didn't have a manual, unfortunately, but this one does. So you can take a look at some of this. But yeah, it's kind of got this sort of old style control scheme, uh, what us gamers call tank controls. But once you get used to it, it's a lot of fun, and it's one of my favorite platformers on the PS1 for sure. I have uh, a lot of fun memories of it. So unfortunate black and white manual, but it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, if you get a chance, uh, try to play this. The, these games should be uh, ported to more systems. They're kind of stuck on these uh, these original these original systems. Let's see what's behind here. Gummy savers. I don't remember that at all. Is that is that what the springs are in this game? Gummy savers. How have I never noticed that before? Yeah, Croc is super cute. Um, very cool sequel too. Kind of mixes things up a little bit uh, in terms of its, its like progression and format. It's more like Mario 64, I guess. Uh, let's see what game's older. I think this game's older. Okay. We have uh, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy for GameCube. Um, this game I also remember getting when it pretty much had come out, uh, when it was new, and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's so, so perfect for this show. I mean, I, I love, love Billy and Mandy, and I have a lot of fun memories of the show, but, um, but yeah, when this game came out, uh, I was so kind of surprised by its quality, I guess, because, you know, licensed cartoon games are definitely not known for uh, further quality, so um, I was really impressed. It's a kind of, it's a fighting game, a sort of like arena fighter, uh, similar to something like Power Stone on Dreamcast. Um, very interesting idea for a Billion Mandy. I mean, it's it's perfect for a Billion Mandy, but also kind of weirdly, uh, weirdly specific in terms of its uh, its gameplay type. But yeah, you collect these uh, these orbs, and you can use specials, and you and that's the only way to actually 
defeat an opponent is to use the special on them. There's a bunch of unlockable characters. Uh, there's missions. Uh, there's a bunch of stages. There's a story mode. It's a decently robust uh, license game, I'm not gonna lie, uh, for what could have easily been something a lot cheaper and a lot worse. It's not bad. I wonder how good that game is, though. But yeah, I had this game. I had, I had this game on the Wii a long time ago, when it, which is basically when it first came out. I'm pretty sure. The Wii or PS2. Um, and I enjoyed it, but I think I sold it at some point, which I don't do super often, so that's a little surprising. Uh, but I recently, kind of within the year, I picked this up at a retro game store because I had a pretty good price on it that I think was a was a mistake. It was like kind of mispriced, but whatever. Um, I picked it up, and it's it's a lot of fun. I'm glad I have the GameCube version because I feel like I really like these old like licensed games on GameCube. Uh, it's very like nostalgic era era and nostalgic system to play them on. Uh, pretty good game. Uh, highly recommend if you can find it for a good price. Uh, probably worth your time. Uh, okay, so the next game is a doozy. I must warn you. This is The Wizard of Oz Beyond the Yellow Brick Road for the Nintendo DS. If you have heard of this game, congratulations. If you haven't, uh, you're in for an interesting treat. So this game is a JRPG, a Japanese role-playing game based on The Wizard of Oz, which is so fascinating, but so like, why hasn't that been done kind of thing when you think about it. You're not in Kansas anymore. Um, it is an absurdly, an absurdly good-looking DS game. It's fully 3D, and it looks really good. It runs, it runs super smooth, and the art style is so wickedly cute. Unfortunately, I am not crazy about the game itself. Also, that's crazy. It comes with two manuals. A, uh, I think it's a French and a English one. I am not crazy about the RPG mechanics themselves, um, but still, I mean, this game is a gem because it is just so wickedly unique. There's giant mech Tin Man. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it follows the story of Wizard of Oz pretty much uh, one for one. But basically, you uh, have party members you get throughout your journey. And, um, you know, it's like a JRPG, which is funny because that fits, it fits the Wizard of Oz weirdly well, a JRPG like this. And the designs are, like I said, amazing. The art is impeccable. I don't know what these cats are. They added some stuff that were not, that's not in the original. But yeah, pretty uh, remarkable. For one, it is remarkable that this was made at all. And uh, remarkable that it was, um, that it was ported and translated as well. Because um, it's, you, they had to get the license for this in America. Which is a, a, probably a lot more work than it needed to be. Um, yeah, there's a trackball to move Dorothy around, which is insane. Um, hey, you can name Dorothy, can you? I guess you, you maybe it's the character's name, but that'd be weird if you can name Dorothy. Um, very cool game though, uh, definitely worth trying. I couldn't really get through the whole game. It was pretty tedious, pretty, uh, pretty mundane of a JRPG, I must say. I need a, I think I really need a good JRPG or an interesting JRPG. To keep me uh keep me invested but this just didn't do it look how cute that art is man it is worth playing just for the art alone in my opinion the art style and um and graphics are worth the price of admission uh maybe also man look at that that is so cute uh maybe worth the price of admission also a actual wizard of oz movie ad on the back is so funny. That is so wickedly funny. Oh my god. Um, I would say the price of admission possibly is worth it because if I recall correctly, this game is getting pretty expensive. I was able to pick it up. Actually, let me check something. I 
I sometimes keep uh, keep receipts when I buy games um, in the actual game case. But this one, I do not have the receipt. I think I spent 15 bucks in this game. And funny enough, that wasn't even that long ago. That was back in like 2017. So uh, now I think the game's worth upwards of $100 which probably isn't worth it, but uh, it's a neat game uh, played on an emulator, I guess. All right, so last game I have here is Carol Blaster, which is um, a very underrated game, I think. So this is the limited run of the physical release of this game. So there's a no back text for some reason. Um, so yeah, this is the physical version of this game, but this is a very cheap digital game. I think it's like five bucks on Steam. Um, this is made by the person that made Cave Story, which is one of my favorite games of all time, if not my favorite game of all time. Oh, I uh, don't know if I ever did the rewards for that, so if, uh, if somebody puts that in, they uh, get free uh, limited run game rewards, I guess. Um, yeah, this game is incredible. It's very good, and I think it gets, quite literally, no attention. Limited Run Games always comes with a fancy little trading card. They love their their junk. I love the back the back casing on this too. So this game is a run and gun shooter, uh, pretty a la case story. Wow, <laughs> great manual, guys. I, a lot of reading material on this one. This is insane. Are you kidding me? Um, but yeah, it is a run and gun shooter, kind of a la case story. Um, it's been like Metal Slugger. Uh, maybe even like Contra or Mega Man-y. Um, just a very basic, like, I think like six or seven level game. Uh, very cute, very fun. Some really good platforming, um, some really good boss design. Uh, just what you'd expect from the guy who made Cave Story, like a legendary video game, Cave Story. Um, but yeah, uh, this was really neat to have the physical version of this game. Um, it's a pretty cheap game, so I think justifying the money for a physical version of this game is probably tough. Um, but if you get a chance, I suggest you play it. It's a, it's a great game. Uh, very underrated, very underappreciated in my opinion. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I probably am going to up the amount of games to six next time because I'm realizing this is a little short and I want to make these a bit longer. But I hope you enjoyed this random grab bag of games. Um, maybe you found something that is interesting to you, something that you might want to play. Uh, I can say for certain that I recommend all of these games for one reason or another. So uh, definitely search them up, um, try one if you can, and let me know if you've played any of these, if there's any underrated games that you like, um, and if you have any suggestions for games, um, I can see if I have them. There's probably a decent chance that I might have one of them, so uh, let me know in the comments. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time.